Welcome to the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top leaders who share stories on how to successfully systemize a business. Now, let's get started with the show. Adik Levit here, the host of the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top entrepreneurs, founders, and thought leaders about systematizing a business. And this episode is being brought to you by Business Success Consulting Group, where we create, document, and improve business processes so companies can scale and thrive. Now, people ask me, what software do I like that I use in order to document processes and procedures? And I'd like to share with you a software that I really like, which is Sweet Process. Now, Sweet Process is an amazing process documentation software that helps create clear step-by-step instructions for every task in your company, anywhere from onboarding new clients to training employees to responding to client requests. With Sweet Process, you have a central place for the team to access procedures and instructions anytime and from any device. So, As a loyal listener to this podcast, or even if you just joined us for the first time, you can try this software for free with a 28-day free-of-charge trial. All you need to do is go to sweetprocess.com forward slash AD, that's A-D-I, like my name, and you can sign up for your free trial and start using it today. And our guest today is Kathy Belargen from Virtual Kathy. And she's the founder and this, she runs Virtual Kathy. So this is Kathy from Virtual Kathy. And I'm very excited to have you on today, Kathy, because we're going to talk about systematizing a business and how we can use virtual assistance to help us in systematizing a business. And we're also going to talk about your own journey of deciding to open your own business, which takes a lot of courage and building it up to now you're onboarding your 15th employee, which is pretty amazing in a matter of two, three years, despite the pandemic, despite everything, you know, you're really, you're living the dream of starting your own business and make it very successful. So welcome, Kathy, and thank you for being a guest. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. You are very, yeah, absolutely. You're very welcome. And you know, it's a good time to give a shout out to BNI. That's where we met, the Business Networking International, and we're both members of it. And we um, saw a lot of success by being part of BNI. And yeah. I think we met a few years ago when you were also working more of as a process consultant. And we will meet for lunch and discuss processes. And then you started your own business, Virtual Kathy. So tell us more about the business. Tell us about Virtual Kathy. So Virtual Kathy was uh, started in June of 2018. It actually, I I kind of blurted it out. I've been thinking about this. Virtual assisting was getting a little bit more mainstream. And with all of the networking that I had done, I had never met a virtual assistant ever. And so I was thinking, obviously there's this need here. Having worked in consulting, you, you see this need working with business owners. And I just, I would have no idea where to find one. And so I blurted out one day to some colleagues, uh, you know, they were whining about their admin and I'm like, oh, I'm going to start a virtual assisting company. And they just kind of looked at me and they're like, well, cool. That sounds great. I'm like, oh no, now I got, I got to do, (laughs) I got to do it. So um, a month later I got everything up and running and uh, shortly thereafter um, was able to focus on it full time. That's fantastic. So now you have multiple Cathy's and you are the self-proclaimed queen of all the Cathy's, right? Yes. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Self-proclaimed. That's right. So, you know, we probably our listeners are thinking, when is it a good time to hire a virtual assistant? How do I know that I need a virtual assistant? And also, if I decide to hire a virtual assistant, what would I have the virtual assistant do? Mm, That's a really good question. And, you know, while as consultants, we could kind of pour over financials and kind of figure out when would be financially the best fit for when you should bring somebody on. Honestly, I find that the one uh, like sign that you're ready to bring on some kind of support is that when you are working all day 
on your business, in your business, doing the stuff that, you know, brings in money. And then you go home and you're looking forward, looking forward to several hours with of admin that is needed. Like you need to get it done. Might be mundane or whatever. And you're doing it and you're telling yourself, I shouldn't be doing this. I feel like that is the sign in which you should start considering bringing on a virtual assistant. And the great thing about virtual assistants is that you don't have to start off even at 10 hours a week. You can start at 10 hours a month, right? And slowly build uh, what they're doing for you um, based off of your need. So, you know, they should be able to kind of scale with your need and with your business. Um, I love it. I mean, I love the 10 hours a month and that's the way I got started. You know, I got to a point where I go, well, you know, I can't do it all myself, although I have consultants that work with me, but in terms of the admin, I cannot do it all myself, but I wasn't ready to hire a full-time admin assistant. So I started with a virtual assistant. That's before I knew you. And I was here a few years ago, about five years ago. And I decided, okay, well, let's see what I can. I, I'm going to start with some tasks to get off my plate, right? So I started really with 10 hours a month. And that was great because I was able to give tasks and give more and give more. And before you know it, you know, you realize that you need a full-time assistant or you don't. It depends on how fast your business is growing. So I like that approach. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, the question that I hear a lot and the question that I had as well is where do I start? Like, what do I get? What, what am I going to have the admin assistant do? You know, a lot of times just having a conversation about all of the day-to-day -day stuff that you currently do administratively, what are things that you wish to do that you just haven't gotten to? So a lot of that like customer service, um, you know, even just sending out a handwritten note to individuals that you talk to, everybody has these grand plans, but when you really get into it, who has time for that, right? So even if you have the, the typical, you know, your email is a mess, um, you know, your CRM needs to be maintained and you have all of these um, ideas like, you know, you want to track all of your tasks within some kind of program, but that all takes time. Um, that all of that kind of like just having a discussion on what you're currently doing that other people can do um, and then what you want to have done that you just haven't gotten to. That's really a good place to start. I love it. And I think it's a great idea to keep track of like, you know, have a list and write everything that you do throughout the day. Yes. And then assign it a dollar value, right? In terms of mm -hmm. like, okay, what are you doing that you really should spend your time on? And what are you doing that somebody else can do? Right. And I know you have a great onboarding process for clients and you help them decide which task you can help them with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think, one of the fears or one of the things that cause people anxiety or they just don't want to move forward is because they go, how am I ever going to teach somebody do something that I do, right? Right. So what, what is your answer to that? You know, there it's a lot easier than people think. And then also, if you are hiring somebody who is a virtual assistant that has experience, a lot of times they can just step in to wherever you're at and either kind of follow what you have already existing or they might even have a better way of doing something that uh, will take less time, more efficient, and then you don't have to worry about it either. So definitely rely on the, per the person that you're talking about in regards to services. See if that's within their wheelhouse that they can just jump in where everything's at without feeling like you have to create all of these processes before you even get support. I think that's what a lot of people kind of, um, I guess, hesitant, are hesitant to bring somebody on because of that reason. Um, you know, we all have experienced the whole, you know, oh, the person that's in this, this role, they should create a procedure manual that usually ends up in a drawer somewhere unfinished, right? Right. Um, virtual assistants can usually step in and actually help create those because you don't have time to. So even if they're in that role. That's exactly right. So it's, you know, you get it to a certain point, but even if you don't, then you can have a virtual assistant that can help you and they can create the role. Right. And then if you are ready to hire a full-time person, mm -hmm. then you can actually have that position already created. So they can create systems for checking your email or running your calendar or 
um, you know, doing your book, you know, like simple bookkeeping, right? Or maybe uh, having all the receipts organized in one place or uh, confirming your appointments, whatever it is, you can then create a system with them. It's always easier to create a system with a person. Absolutely. And generally, I mean, that is with definitely within a virtual assistant's wheelhouse. You know, usually they're an admin expert and, you know, they're, they're delighted too. And then you don't have to worry about it either. Um, you can just review it, make sure that things are on point. And then when the time comes, when you want to hire either a part-time or full-time person in-house, you have this beautiful procedure manual that you didn't even have to do yourself that somebody else has created within that role. That's exactly right. So, you know, we actually work on a, we have a client in common, we have several clients, but we have one client in common that we documented their processes. Basically, we map the processes, we documented it, and in the, um, basically in course of doing that, I realized, you know, okay, there isn't really a person that can do it. And there is really not a point here in hiring a full-time person. We can work with virtually, with a virtual assistant that can take that and then basically create that to a new level. Because when we document the processes and procedures for companies, we have to have somebody there that is doing it or have some kind of a knowledge of how to do it. Or we create new positions, but we take in a virtual assistant, they can take it to a whole new level because they, they try, they do it. You know, They go, okay, here is the procedure of how we're actually going to answer the phone, right? Or here is a procedure of how we're going to confirm an appointment, et cetera. So that's where having somebody who is experienced in admin that you do not have to have there for 40 hours a week if you don't need to, that can help tremendously. Right. You know, I have to say that that was an, a, a testament to the services that you provide, having uh, been able to walk into this client's pretty extensive um, role, right? I mean, there was a lot of uh, little... A lot of intricacies, yes, a lot yeah. of details, right? A lot of details, yes. Um, and then it also gives, it gave the, the business owner a peace of mind to, instead of just being like, okay, well, I'm going to trust this person that I don't really know, he was able to walk through that process with you and uh, make sure that everything is in line. So he did feel ready to bring on somebody out, outside of his company. And I think that's, you know, there's definitely this, um, uh, this, you know, the trusting this trust factor. And um, one of the things that are, is very difficult is especially for um, a business owner like him that was doing it himself. There's definitely this control, like the, this release of control that you so well handled by creating this. So then there is going to be success, guaranteed success in uh, somebody stepping into that role. So Absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. Done. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So what we learned so far is, you know, if you are at a point where you are overworked and you're doing tasks that you would like to delegate or give to somebody else, but you are not ready to hire a full time person because maybe that position is not uh, defined or there are tasks that you don't have processes for or that you don't want to create them yourself, get a virtual assistant she or he will start doing those tasks, then you will have a process created. You will be able to document that or they will be able to document those particular parts. And then you will have a position that is created, a job description there, that then you can bring somebody on full time. And then another thing is like, if you have definitely, you know, you have a need in the company where you identify the need, then in terms of helping, but again, not full time, part-time virtually doing it virtually then um contact kathy so kathy what is how can people contact you um they can go to my website and there will be a list of services types of services that we offer um anywhere from you know tiered admin services phone answering services social media management and that's virtualkathy.com um, i'm also on um, a lot of social media platforms um, on facebook Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Fantastic. Okay. So now let's talk about systematizing a business, right? Because this is what we're all about. It's about processes and procedures and systematizing a business. What's the importance of having a good system in place? 
you know, and I'll just use my own business for example, um, coming from a place where, it, you know, that was what I did prior to starting my company. Um, obviously, I knew the uh, importance of having policies and procedures in place. But when I started my business, especially uh, when we got to the point where, you know, COVID hit um, and there was a pandemic, the business completely took off. <laughs> and um, the policies and procedures that I had created to kind of have that foundation, uh, it didn't necessarily go by the wayside, but very quickly did they become outdated. Um, but thankfully, as we were just completely inundated with work, um, it was so much easier to have that kind of foundational piece where we can continue to update it as we go along and as we continue to bring on, um, you know, on, on staff and, and really kind of uh, clarifying our processes. Um, I can't imagine trying to do something from scratch in the midst of, you know, a chaos of just running a business. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that is the common denominator of the guests on the show. They say, you know, we took the time as business owners to actually, we found the time, we created the time, however you want to say it, yeah. to actually document our processes, make sure our processes, our procedures, our policies are in place. And they don't have to be perfect, right? I mean, you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's better to put something in writing yes. and have something there for people to follow. Right. So then they will be able to, uh, then you will be able to grow it from there. So that's absolutely a very important part. Right. So let's talk about quality control. How do you ensure that now that you have 15 Cathy's, how do you ensure that all the Cathy's are like Cathy? <laughs> um, well, you know, I guess the beauty about uh, the staff that I do have is that even though we have processes on how we want to handle certain things and how we, you know, uh, do our email management or whatever, um, a lot of it is going to be custom based on what the client's needs are, as well as kind of the, the personality fit for uh, each VA to each client. And so um, I do give quite a bit of, um, uh, what is that called, autonomy, or, uh, you know, there's a lot of freedom in um, figuring out what, what would be the best approach to each client. So it's not all necessarily set in stone. But having this uh, foundation in which, okay, this is this is the procedure for this, and then any kind of gray areas, um, what is going to work best for the client has really allowed us to customize our, our our service to where it's really matching what their needs are. That's great. That's absolutely an important thing because you want you want it to customize. You want to have it make sure that it's exactly what the client needs, right? And right now, actually, you know, we're both part of NABO, which is National Association of Women Business Owners. And now you are going to be the virtuous or one of your Cathy's. We're going to have our, we have our own virtual assistant for our chapter is going to help us with the um, organization and the, and the admin um, actions that we need in the yeah. chapter. So I'm experiencing that onboarding. You're, it's very, very, very smooth onboarding. And it's, it's been a pleasure. So it's definitely been a pleasure doing, going through the process of the onboarding and seeing how smooth it is, how customized it is, how much you listen to the needs of the organization. So that's definitely a great testimonial for you and your services. And along with the many clients that I, that we have in common that are definitely raving fans. So definitely I will encourage people to go to virtualcathy.com and check out your services. So that's and or I reach out to you on social media, et cetera. So, you know, one thing that I wanted to mention also is that there is a book by Michael Hyatt. It's called the, um, I think it's called the Perfect uh, Virtual, the Perfect Executive Assistant, I, a world-class um, executive assistant. Check it out. It's on his website. And it's, it is a book that I think it's a must for every business owner to read because it actually tells you, it walks you through why you, every business owner should have an executive assistant that can be virtual as well. Right. And so that, that would be my recommendation. If we have one of our listeners or uh, if we have our, whoever is watching this video, I thinking, is it time for me to do that? I said, yes, read the book. It will walk you through. And at the end of the book, you'd probably be able to answer that question. Am I ready? Right. 
So what, what books inspire you or what books would you recommend, business books that you like or authors, podcast, anything that you feel it will be inspiring for our listeners to Ooh. make that leap of like, yeah, let's, let's, sing, let's expand a business. Let's hire that virtual assistant. Maybe not necessarily virtual assistant specific, but I always go back to the book by Michael Gerber, E-Myth. E-Myth. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's funny because the story that it, it walks through, if you, you know, if the listeners haven't read it before, um, it's just like every other business owner who's just completely overwhelmed. And I just love how it breaks down how, you know, what role or what position we hold mainly, you know, there's three positions that you should have like a little bit of each kind of thing. And which one do you actually hold in your business and how that's um, really limiting you in some area. I love that. Um, I gotta look at my like bookshelf here. Um, I have to say one of my favorite books, and this is, uh, is, uh, the culture code by Daniel Coyle. And that I have found to be uh, inspirational for how I want to lead my team and kind of create this um, and cultivate a culture and a community within my business for all of my virtual assistants. And it's been wonderful. So I really enjoy that. Um, but that's, I guess, more mainly, that's not necessarily, you know, to. Well, I think it relates because you really have to have a culture. You have to have a good culture yes. and then you have to follow up with processes and procedures that basically implement that culture. Right. And it's very obvious that, you know, just by talking to you, you know, you have your the leadership that you provide and I've seen you in action and I've seen your um, some of your employees. So you can see how you interact and um, how you lead them. So that gives confidence that you know, when we interact with you, we act and we interact with your team, it's the same interaction. And I think that's really important. And it's really important also for the virtual assistant to adapt to the culture of the clients or environment and help them create a better culture. So I think it all definitely it relates, you know, you can't just have processes without culture, you have to have culture and you have to execute it by processes. So it all, it all goes together. One other book too is uh, Clockwork by Michael Michalowicz. It actually talks about how, you know, you're in this role too. And it also goes into length about um, the ability to create processes by use of videos versus everything being documented on paper. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. I think it's kind of the way of the world now. Oh, absolutely. Um, knowing that people, learn in different ways and maybe not a step-by-step -step document is the best way for somebody to learn but maybe video kind of walking through that process and you're already doing it anyway kind of thing i love that uh, mindset as well i love it too and i and that's we use it all the time you know we combine the videos the screenshots the writing but it's not when i look at the process at an sop at a standard operating procedure that has just writing I go, who is going to read that right <laughs> let's utilize it and especially if we're documenting it electronically why not use a link to a video just record your screen talk for two minutes explain it it just it makes it so much easier right now we're working on a big project documentation for a client and it's um basically they are a billing medical billing uh facility and we definitely use videos to explain how to use the different modules and how to do different things. And it's just so much faster. I mean, you can just look at a video, so the key, faster. right? I mean, the key is that we can go into 30 minute videos. They have to be small and short so they can actually, you can actually follow through, do it. And then you don't have to explain it over and over again. So I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, Kathy, this was great. Thank you for being a a guest on this podcast and definitely i hope we inspired our listeners and those that are watching us to look at getting a virtual assistant if you are, don't already have one delegate so you can actually do what you enjoy doing and expand your business by doing so so thank you very much thank you for having me
Thanks for listening to the System Simplified Podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.